I'm gonna talk you through the rules of what makes a great portfolio for UX designers. And if you stick around to the end, I'm gonna show you a place where you can find a list of amazing UX design portfolio websites that I've collected myself over the years, as well as a resource for looking at amazing case studies by other designers. Let's get right into it. Hey, I'm Parvin. I make videos about how to become a better designer. If that sounds like something you're interested in, please do hit subscribe to follow along. Okay, so the first rule is that your portfolio should be a website. In my opinion, in 2024, you shouldn't be sending people portfolios as PDFs or as Figma links or anything else. It should just be a website. If you're a UX designer in 2024, chances are that you're gonna be working on some product that uses web technologies. Even if it's a native application, there's probably something to do with web in there. So it's really important you understand how the web works. You understand the basics of HTML and CSS. Now I've got a video about what you should learn about code, which you can watch here. But to be honest, making a website, you really don't need to know how to code. You can use Squarespace or Card or Wix. It's really good now. For me, if I were doing a no code design portfolio website, I would use Framer. And indeed that is what I use for my design portfolio for a long time before moving my whole site over to Next.js. I've just made a video about that, which you can watch here. So yeah, I think it's so important for your portfolio to be a website. And more than that, I think the website itself should be an example of your work. So the way you design it, the way you do the information architecture, the content hierarchy, all of that should be also showing off your UX skills at the same time as actually talking about your case study. The second rule is just to cut down on how many words you write. Now, I remember the very first time I put together a UX portfolio, I had so many pages going into all the little decisions and adding context, and I thought it was so important to get all of that context in. But remember, your portfolio isn't a museum. It's a sales piece, and it's selling you. And in order for someone to consume that content without falling asleep, you need to make it as punchy as possible. So if you're struggling with this, what I would say is just write it all out, get everything out on paper, and then take a break, don't look at it for a day, and then come back to it and think, what are the three most interesting design decisions I made over the course of this project that I'd like to focus in on? And just take those three and highlight them. And the way I like to highlight them is to have the heading be the actual learning or the actionable insight that you found from your research or whatever it is, just have that up at the top and then talk about that point next. You don't need to cover all the minutiae and it doesn't matter if you talk through things, not chronologically, but just in what makes it most interesting for the reader, but just keep it as brief as possible. So the third rule is that all of the user interface design, all of the UI components you share should look absolutely fantastic. Now it doesn't even matter if that's not what got shipped in the end or if you had to change things later on because of design constraints or if your front end dev implemented it completely differently. Everything that you put on the page should be as beautiful as possible because then the person who's viewing it knows that you know how to make things that look that beautiful, even if that's not eventually what happened. And as well as that, I think that your final piece of design work should always go right at the top of the case study. This is a tip that Louis from Figma gave me when he was looking over my portfolio. He said, start with the end, start with the beautiful finished product so that people don't have to scroll through loads of like sketches and first attempts to find the thing that they're actually trying to find. Lastly, the final rule is to be as detail oriented as possible. Now, if English isn't your first language or you know that you struggle with this, I'd get a friend to read over it and really comb through your writing to make sure that there aren't any spelling mistakes, any grammar mistakes, any typos. This is where it's so important because having seen part of the hiring end when people who are looking at applications just have hundreds of applicants to review through, any small mistake is just grounds for saying, nope, let's move on to the next applicant. So it's really important that you make sure that your portfolio is completely clear of any of those small mistakes that creep in. So those are the four rules for making a great standout UX portfolio. Now, I know what you want to see. You want to see some examples. So here are some of my absolute favorite websites. I've left a link down in the description for where you can find a list of all of these. So loads of people's work to go and see how they've laid it out, see how they've designed it. Of course, you can also check out my website and my portfolio. Please feel free to take a look at that. 
So those are examples of good designed websites. The other thing I wanted to share is Case Study Club. So Case Study Club collects the best case studies and the most well-written case studies from around the internet. People can submit their case studies. It's a great resource and there's some really great stuff on there too. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you are watching this because you're looking for a job, good luck looking for your job. I know how hard it is to get your foot in the door or to move on to something else, especially right now. It's a really hard time. So really, really good luck. Please do feel free to ask me any questions in the comments. And last thing to say is thank you so much for watching. Please, if you like this video, do hit the like button or do hit subscribe so you don't miss it anymore. Thank you so much. 